Dave Erickson here inside the 2015 Ford Mustang GT. Today, an exclusive behind the scenes look at the exterior design process of this iconic vehicle. Um, basically, where everything starts is from a sketch. Um, our ideation comes together. We have like probably 700 sketches at the beginning. You can imagine every single designer wants to be part of the new Mustang. It's a quite big deal for us. And, and um, you can see some of the themes which we took to the next step. And then we start refining the sketches. And we get more realistic right, right here. And we get a little bit more in Photoshop. So you can see right on the bottom. So we get more and more realistic. Um, what happens in that process? Um, basically, um, we, you see right here, these are the final themes which we chose and we showed to our uh, senior management. We have three final themes on the Mustang, which was a theme A, B, and C, which we had as a full-size model, which I'm going to explain to you in a little while. Um, this is our final theme. This was a theme A, which actually uh, won the internal research, and we took it to the next step. But this was good exploration for us because we could explore with the key elements of the Mustang. We had different uh, side view treatments. We had different glass openings, as you can see here, right here. Or this one has the B pillar, like today's car, or also no B pillar, C pillar, right here. So it's a more traditional way. So, so what we do usually. Once we chose this theme to be the leading one, we took some of the elements, you know, like the greenhouse, the profile of this one, the fast spec, and, and we continue working on this model. So behind you, there's an actual clay model where everything, what you see right here, all the two-dimensional work gets translated into three-dimensional work behind you. It's a, it's a clay model. And where we as the designers work together with, this is Larry Pilovsky, he's a master modeler. Him and his theme basically work together close with design to get these sketches translated into a three-dimensional shape, as you see right here. So what we do, basically, we tape up these lines which are in the sketches, and we, we want to get as close as possible to mimic the sketch which you see behind you into the three dimension. The, the, the tone model, the clay models are very, very uh, um, a good tool for us to basically um, evaluate our surfacing, evaluate our proportions, so you can actually walk around this clay, you can look at the, the surfacing, you can actually touch it, you can feel it, you can paint these models. So there's quite a lot you can do with these uh, models. Um, so it took us basically about uh, two years in clay to find the final theme. And from there on, we develop another year basically uh, refining and getting all the details because you can imagine the car design is very complex. So there's a lot of engineering input which we get and we have to work very closely with them together. And there's a lot of details as well. Headlights, taillights, serious differentiations, wheels. So there's a lot of details. It's not just one man job. So from the clay model, what we usually do, we, um, we take our clay models and we uh, cast them and we create these fiberglass models over here. And these models, uh, actually, you can see they are, they are solid. They are very solid, and, and, and then that helps us actually to, to evaluate the surfacing on this car, to check one more time the lines, just make sure that we are, have the precision we ask for, and to make sure that our gaps and, and, and how the car uh, acts in different environments, like outside the showroom, in different lighting systems, so how the car sits on the wheels, and this is very realistic to the production car, basically. On the other side, you know, this is a split model. If you look on the other side, you can see the convertible version of the, of the Mustang. This is our data control model, where we basically go one more time with engineering and check one more time our margins, our quality, and see how everything fits together. And you can see right here, this is a convertible, where you have this beautiful waterline running through the belt line. And there's a different execution through the haunches. So that actually gave us a freedom um, to have a different execution from a convertible to the coupe. So this convertible actually mimics more the linearity of this car. Of the, of the convertible versus the coupe, which has more the emphasis of dropping down hunch on the, on the, on the back side. Um, and then from this model, we take, actually take it to the next step, work very close in engineering, we digitalize the entire model, and then we build a one-of-a-kind one prototype inside our house, which is, takes us about 20 weeks, and we build this model right here, where we get more into details, where you can see the, the functional headlights, taillights. So 
So we get more and more into details. We actually explore more with the paint. This is our race red, the car spec as a GT version. Then we go more into details where you see the, the position of the camera, you see more the badging details. So that gets very, very close to the production, production car. You can open the doors. This is plexiglass windows. This is again a fiberglass model. So it's a fully, it's a full model. It's not, not drivable but it's, it looks and it feels like a real car. So it sits right here as a GT spec 20 inch wheels. And just a brief view on the new car. Um, basically the new car from today versus the today's car, we lowered the greenhouse about 35 millimeters. We introduced the fastback, so we moved the, shifted the entire greenhouse more reward. Um, we widened the car about 50 millimeters. That gives us a freedom to have a more powerful haunches, more wider shoulders. Um, as you can see into the rear end, um, we have a new technologies, which is indirect firing LED headlight taillights, which uh, on the other side gave us some freedom to basically have this three-dimensional element, which you can actually grab them. If you look through the history, we took the 69 as inspiration, and, and we thought, you know, there is something which you need, must think on since 50 years and we wanted to bring it in the, in the new era but execute it in a very modern way. Um, there's a very functional rear diffuser which is not just for styling, it's actually very functional. It creates a downforce generator right here on the bottom. So we beautifully executed it I think with the, with the blackout which on the other side takes some weight out of the car and the other side combines this, this aerodynamic feature which runs through the entire car to the rocker to the side of the car and goes all the way to the front end. Um, if you walk to the front end, you can see right here on the front end, there's the face of Mustang, which we had since 50 years. If you look at a 1968 car, there was a one particular model, is a 1968 Shelby model, has a trapezoidal grille right here. So you see it in the new, is basically a new interpretation of this grille. Um, Again, what I was telling you guys about the uh, backlights, about the taillights, about the tri bar, we thought it would be really cool to have a signature element on the front as well, which are these shark gills, which actually light up at night. So you're going to always recognize there's a Mustang coming at you, and once it passes you, you're going to see there's a Mustang in front of you. Um, and I mean, there's a, also homage on the 1965 where we had the indents and the sheet metal. They've been actually right here in the sheet metal, so we did it more modern, which uh, they actually light up, and I think that's a really cool feature and a signature for the new Mustang. You know, we didn't want to be retro, and, but we know what a Mustang is, so we did, we did say we're going to pick some elements. We didn't want to end up to be a, like a theme park of Mustang cues, like a C-scoop on the body side, a color, body color B-pillar. So there's a lot of cues which we did, tried, and, and, and it was actually, our goal was more of taking it away and what is it recognizable as a Mustang. So it starts first of all with proportion. So the first proportion, the Mustang's from the 60s, a very long hood, a very short deck, a greenhouse shift to the rear ward and a very selfish cabin. That was the basic setup for this car, which actually when you squint your eyes, you see from the distance there's a Mustang, you see the silhouette of the car and you know it's a Mustang, the shark nose. So there's quite a few elements which tells you this is a Mustang. And then we went into the details, like I was just talking about the headlights, the, the taillights as well, and you know, the, the sculpture on the hood, this is all muscle car features which are very Mustang-like, but not in terms of just copying and pasting, it's more about reinventing them. Take your bitch, watch me switch it and never